All right, folks, what's up? This is uh, Rifat Bari from uh, The Survey. Today, we're gonna be speaking with Mr. Azarati, a Brooklyn Tech physics teacher for the past half a decade. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's get started. So, um, it's going pretty good. So, Mr. Azarati, why did you uh, decide to become a teacher? Uh, that is a really good question. Uh, I don't know if there's an easy answer. I would say I've always found explaining things to people as really enjoyable and uh, I think I have a pretty good, um, in conversation, I think I have a pretty good understanding of what people understand and think and how to explain things in a way that helps them understand it. Right. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Okay. So how do you under, how do you recognize when a student is learning as opposed to when they're not learning? Like before an exam, <laughs> how do you know that? Uh, I think it, there's a couple of ways. I mean, you could... <laughs> I think to know how a student learns is different for each student, but I think ultimately you look for them to take something that you've been trying to teach them and apply it themselves without you without you helping. Right? Yeah, like independently. Um, that's probably the biggest thing, and then, and then that can be done differently. I mean, it could be done in group work, it could be by themselves, it could be the way they ask a question. Um, but I look for that, and then in terms of them not learning or if they're struggling, I try to try to see what is the obstacle to getting in their way. Right. If I can get that out of it, because I, I can't, you know, get them off the cell phone at the time. So. But you, you do do your best. I mean, you got a uh, 100% of your students past the regents last year. Yeah. And um, your, uh, if I recall correctly, your uh, average AP score for Physics 2, was it? Uh, was 3.56, which is much higher than the yes. national average. Yeah. Jeez, you did some yeah. research. So, uh, I mean, what's your teaching philosophy? What's, what's like, uh, um, what motivates you in doing that? I try to, with physics specifically, I try to give real-world examples, or like things that the kids can understand. So, um, I try to make up example problems, or take pictures, or videos, or sound, or something. Like, I do a lot of stuff, like, just on my way home, or on tech, or uh, things in my everyday life, to try and help people realize there's physics, you know, going on all the time around us, sort of. Yeah. A lot of people know physics, they don't realize it, you know, they don't think about it. But so you try to, like, enforce the applications into their lessons? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the region specifically is, like, really weird yeah, and boring questions. Yeah, and just, like, putting numbers into equations. So I try to help them understand a little bit more behind why things are happening. Right. So, uh, why did you choose tech? I mean, Tech has a very large student to teacher ratio. Sure. So, uh, I don't know if I chose, I think it was more that tech chose me. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and I don't think they chose me because they wanted me specifically that they needed a physics teacher. Like, okay. The school's so big and um, not having a teacher is like very disruptive to the school. Right. And, uh, I was working at a school prior to this and I was looking to transition out of that. And then they had an opening here and it just kind of worked out timing wise that things worked out. And, you know, it was definitely, um, you know, tech has a, a reputation that keeps for itself. And so yeah. getting that phone call was, like, it was amazing to know that, like, not only that they had an opening, but they wanted me rather than me trying to chase them. So, wow. so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, um, you've taught at, like, uh, charter schools. You've taught at, you know, the best uh, specialized high Yeah, schools. so I started, my first yeah. real teaching job was um, at a charter school in Harlem. Um, and then I also did my student teaching at Stuyvesant as well, so okay. I've had a kind of a uh, mix of specialized schools and charter schools, yeah. Okay, so does that like inform your teaching philosophy? Like A little bit. Um, the charter school was a weird, uh, interesting place, I shouldn't say weird. It was very, I learned a lot there about more how I behave in the classroom and how like, I kind of want to model my class and how my students behave, and so that helped inform me a lot, and then when I worked at Stuyvesant, that again also helped me kind of learn a little bit more about how I want to behave in class, how I want my students to behave. And it really helped me sort of, uh, I think, get to the point where I'm at now in class, which is I try to have a balance of fun and, and seriousness. Sometimes it's a little too fun and not as serious. But right. But you do get the job done. I mean, the scores are I, like sky high. I try to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you said why you chose tech, but is there something you would change at tech, like? Um, for example, uh, relieve the stress on students, or I don't know. Probably the number of students, just overall oh, the number of students. I think. I mean, I don't know. I, it, the, 
I don't know if that'll solve it. I think that might help alleviate a lot of things. Just the stress on students getting to class on time, yeah. getting anywhere, uh, relieving the number of students with, you know, there would be less work for teachers, less stress for administrators, but, you know, that's still the, the life that we have here. Yeah, yeah, and actually uh, that ties into a point I was thinking of. Um, so I looked up the school quality report for TAG. It turns out we're excelling at every single level except communication between parents and administrators. Mm. And really, I think the reason why we're struggling at that aspect is because of this amount, this number of students, like, no other school. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. I, I don't know if that's the reason why, but I mean, just as a teacher, like, if you have five classes of 34 kids, you have 170 students. And so just uh, doing something as simple that takes one minute per student is almost three hours of work. And so if you do something that's two minutes long for each student, that, you know, is a little more than five hours of work. And so probably with communication and stuff and holding people accountable to things like that, it's difficult because just there's so many, there's only so many hours in the day. And so right. you have to, you have to make choices. Exactly, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, you've taught at Tech for almost half a decade. Mm -hmm. So what was like the most rewarding experience you've had at Tech over the last uh, few years? The, just recently I had my first, like the kids that graduated that I had, okay. came back to visit last year and so that was it was nice to see them it was nice to see kids that are now in their well now they're in their junior year but last year they were in their sophomore year of college mm -hmm. and to kind of have them come back and still remember me and i still remember them that was that felt good. Yeah. Yeah. um and you know every teacher you know faces challenges when they first join a new school what challenges did you face when you first Oh, uh, there's a lot of systems to learn, um, a lot of, uh, you know, you have to, the school's gigantic and you have to learn how to navigate it, um, and there's just so many people in the building, and it's, it's a lot, it's just a lot of different information to learn right away. I think that was the biggest change. The charter school I was at before, it was very, very small, and so I had to get used to that. And also, I started in the middle of the year, so it was oh. like, I had to like, it's like twice the work. Yeah, it's like start right away. So, yeah. Into it, yeah. so um, wow, so you've had a lot of experience at uh, a lot of amazing schools. So, uh, speaking of the future, what do you see yourself uh, five years in the future? Retired. Retired. No, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have a plan for five years from now. I would say uh, it might be easier for me not to, but. Are you more like in the moment? Not so much in the moment, but I don't try to force my way. Sort yeah. of like, you know, flow like water. Okay. Bruce Lee. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. Azarati. Uh, we'll miss you. Yeah, so, no, thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.